Hey guys, it's Troy with DIY Home and Auto. If you're watching this and you haven't watched the previous two videos uh, on the center console of my 99 Dodge Ram, you'll want to go watch those. I'll leave links here and down in the description below. In video number one, I show how to take that center console apart. In video number two, I show reskinning it. I used two pieces of leather, stitched them together. I got some comments on that video that it was a little more complicated than it needed to be. So be it, it still has kind of a cool look. It's not professionally done by any means. This is me just kind of messing around and learning as I go. It's high time that I finish this project. We've since moved to a new place. I'm in my new shop, my new garage. Got my space here to work so I'm comfortable and we're ready to get started. So I have all the materials that I need. I have my board that I'm going to use and I've got my cup holders. So the very first thing I need to do is measure the console for the exact width that I need, the length, etc. and get that rough shape. Mark it and then make sure that I duplicate it on both sides. So then we'll figure out exactly where our cup holders are going to go get the holes drilled out for those, and then we'll route the edges to make it nice and smooth. Uh, I still am kind of up in the air on exactly what I'm gonna do as far as the finish goes on it, but we'll figure that out when we get there. <clears throat> in the last video, I marked exactly how far in, how far in from the back, uh, so that I could drill my holes for mounting this thing without hitting any of the mechanical mechanism that's inside of there. I've got to stay outside of those measurements and still be wide enough for two cup holders up here at the front. So I've got to get those measurements uh, that are my absolute bare minimums and then go as wide as I can comfor comfortably go, still leaving room for my elbow, right? I want my elbow to still be able to sit on that. And the reason we're gonna route that edge is so that it's not a sharp edge, hit my elbow, go over a speed bump or something and BAM! That would really hurt. So I'll very likely get it drawn out on paper first and then transferred onto the board uh, just so I can get that visual of what I want it to look like, the shape, and then also make sure that it will work when laid on top of the console. So this is a duplicate of the top of the center console as it is size-wise in the truck. I've got it mocked up, rounded edges, I've got it marked for which way is front. I transferred my marks from my measurements in from the side, in from the back, so that when I drill my holes I'm not hitting any of the hardware like we talked about. I'll have one bolt at the front and two at the back, and then the board will have to poke out farther than the front far enough to have the cup holders in it and then just try to make it look as good as possible. So that's the goal now to mock it up in paper as well so I can overlay it and make sure I'm satisfied with what I'm going for. So I was struggling through that kind of freehandish, and then I found a roll of tape that was the exact, or really, really close anyway, to the radius that I needed. And so I was able to just set that on a trace. I was like, man, that was way easier. And the part I was struggling with the most was making this little inward curve that I'm playing with. Uh, I was just gonna go straight across, and I thought, well, maybe I can do something that'll add a little, a little something to it still toying with that idea, but putting that radius on there uh, was able to center it and make it look uniform. Uh, as long as I can duplicate that in wood, uh, I think it'll look really good. I need to taper in to a little bit narrower so that I have room for my elbows, passenger and driver side. Let's finish that up. So 
So what I'm left with after cutting out my template is this shape and I'll cut it to length after I put my drill holes and stuff in there too so that I know exactly what size I want. Two cup holders, kind of a tapered shape around it, and then room for elbows down on top. Let's get it cut to length and put our drill holes in it. Well, there is the mocked up version in paper. Now to duplicate this onto the wood that we're using. So I used a punch marking tool to mark where my holes are going to be and because I have to sand and route the edges and all those things I just marked them with a marker so that I could easily find them again just in case the backside gets marred up any worse than it already is. <clears throat> my router is a Craftsman 2 horsepower. Uh, it's a plunge router so I have the plunge uh, set with that as well. Uh, we won't need that. I'm going to use a half inch round over a bit. So after mere minutes of sanding, I actually, and I mean literally minutes, I really like how this has turned out. I'm gonna sand a little bit more. These are the, the absolute worst parts. Right along here, you can still see the jigsaw blade teeth marks, kind of as I was digging into the corners. Need to sand there a little bit more, uh, but the top edge and around all of the uh, radiuses and whatnot look really, really good. Wherever I was cutting straight, just looks amazing. So now the great debate is stain or paint. Those are the, I'm back and forth. I have this really cool looking gray stain and I kind of like the wood grain in this too. So this is an oil-based Minwax Classic Gray number 271. Uh, I used this on the surface of my old workbench at the old place. I uh, really liked how it turned out, but I liked it so much I'm going to try it and see if it'll match the interior of my truck well enough. I'm wondering if it'll get dark enough. Let me grab a, a rag and let's put some on and see what it looks like. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think the wood grain shows through a little strong. Let's go out to the truck and compare it to the leather. Well, it's definitely not an exact match. I'm also going to treat the leather. It's gotten some just wear and tear scratching and stuff like that on it. What I'm gonna do is treat it with some Meguiar's Gold Class Rich Leather, because trust me, this is rich leather. Oh, tell me it's not, come on. Anyway, this is what I'm gonna use on it. I'll leave links down below to all these products. Uh, I'm an Amazon affiliate, so I get a little bit of a kickback if you guys use those links. I appreciate that, all the support I can get. Let me uh, just clean that real quick and treat that leather so that it's the color that it's gonna be, uh, cause I'll continue to use that treatment on it as we go forward. And then we'll compare that again and see if we decide to use stain or not. The jury's still out. I wonder if maybe multiple coats would make it darker and make it look better. Rub it in real good. Just buffing it back off again with the back side of the rag. And then we'll compare this side that I've done to the other side. So this is a top down view. The bottom of the screen is the side that I treated. Um, this one still has scratches in it. Those will be covered up for the most part. This will be exposed. So that'll look pretty good. Let's get this other side treated. I'm gonna put another coat of stain on that scrap piece as well. See if it darkens up a little. So a second coat of stain isn't really darkening that wood any. It's just not soaking down into the grain to make it any darker. It actually doesn't look too bad. I'll show you from the other side. I've got the door open with the sun shining. A little better light from that other side. Matches up pretty good with the fabric. Decent with the dashboard. The carpet. I think I'm just gonna go for it. Yep, I'm definitely going that direction. But before we can stain the piece, we need to drill the holes in it, finish sanding it, finish all the woodwork. More sanding, not gonna bore you with all that. I'll show you when we are ready for the stain. So we we'll cut to that right now. So this was kind of my last uh, second to make any changes to my design, and I decided to put in two rare earth magnets to help hold my phone down. Because right now, I just set my phone face down on the center console like that and it slides around it drives me crazy i'd rather have it be face up hey look that's me and my wife but anyway i'd rather have it be face up and i've got this little doodad on the back i decided to use these rare earth magnets i just drilled some holes i'm gonna stain it first get it all finished and then i'll put these in with epoxy and then i can set my phone down my phone will orient about like so be a little bit out of line of sight but better than it was oh you can see my led lights there. Shop lights. And then let's get some stain on this thing. So I'm gonna be using JB Weld One Minute Clear Epoxy. Uh, I'm just gonna mix it on the paper right here. I won't need very much. bolts that I have, they have some raised lettering on them, but I don't want those raised letters. I don't want it to be shiny like that. So I'm just gonna take some 120 grit sandpaper on my random portable sander and just scuff up that surface and kind of make that look more like a brushed nickel. So that didn't take very long at all. 
And I think I'm just gonna leave it like that because up against here, I think that'll look pretty good. Got two more to do. There we go. Put a nice little swirl effect on them. They're at the end. Just held it right in the middle and let it kind of swirl around. But you do want to hold on to these things pretty tight when you're doing it. You don't want to be uh, like having a Tommy Boy effect. Nice distance. Don't do dumb stuff. All right, let's drill some holes. All right, so we're out here in my truck. We gotta be six inches in and four inches in from the back for these two holes. And then that one will line up automatically about here. And then we just need to center the board. Next step, epoxy the bolts in, and then we can attach it. That's fantastic. I'm excited. in the truck. <laughs> oh yeah, that is so sweet. So you guys will have to comment down below is this something that you would do on your truck? What if somebody were selling a truck and it had something like this in it? Would that deter you from buying it? Or is this a considered an upgrade? I know everybody's style is a little bit different and whatnot. But... There we go. My truck has cup holders again. And a bonus, a place for my phone where it won't slide around. I used to set it on the console like this. I'd hit the brakes and it would just right off the console. I hated it. So now I'm hoping that that'll stay and maybe even I'll do that if I'm not using that second cup holder. That actually works really well too. Dual function. Well guys, this closes out my center console series on the Gen 2 Dodge Ram pickup truck. Give me a thumbs up if you think I deserve it. If you haven't seen the first videos, go back and watch those from the beginning. Episodes one and two. One, I show how to take the console apart. Two, I buy some custom leather and stitch it into a new covering for it. If you think I deserve it, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Ring that little bell so you're notified of the new stuff that I'm posting. I'm in the process of restoring a 79 Ford truck. Uh, I've got a 66 Ford truck that's coming up as well. So if you're interested in those type of builds, click those bells so you get notified. But this is Troy with DIY Home and Auto. Check it out. See you guys in the next video.